at all events. Do you, do you pay each producer when you shop or do you pay at the cashier? You pay the cashier. Just like a grocery store where you go up to the um, main central cash register checkout, they ring up all your products. We then, it's all taken into our database and we pay the producers twice a month for 90% of whatever they sell. So at the, for the customer side, we accept cash check, credit card, um, the food stamp, food stamp card, and then the producers can be paid either through a check or we do direct deposit for them. So we try to make it convenient on both sides. Does that mean every tomato has to have a barcode on it? That's a good question. Uh, the, the tomatoes, each bin, we're kind of like a bulk food store in that way, where each bin then has a set of barcodes with it. So the customer know when they go around, they get a bag of tomatoes and they put a barcode on it and they take it they take it to the cash register that way. It can be a little confusing at first, but we try to have volunteers and our managers there to help when you see somebody struggling with that. <laughs> I wanted to ask about meat, milk, and egg. Yes, anything that, you know, products that basically can spoil and whose liability and how you cover those things. The producers are ultimately the ones that are responsible for it. Actually, meat, milk, and eggs are some of the easiest ones to deal with. Produce is the hardest, and then baked goods, because when you're dealing with things that have very short shelf life. The market manager and the volunteers do the on-site, so we're constantly turning over products, we're looking for spoilage, we're monitoring, we're calling the producers when we're running low on products or if we're seeing any problems. So we're, we're doing a lot of that on-site stuff for them. I'm wondering how you allocate shelf space um, you know, and, and whether there's particular places near the door that are more favorable and how you kind of equitably distribute that. And then a related question is um, just with 170 producers, what's the range in sales? Or it, it seems like some of them must be real small and some of them may be more major. Yes, that's very true. With 170 producers, some sell only in the winter, some sell only in the summer. Um, so on an average week, I sell for about 100 different producers. We have everything from people who sell you know, $1,000 a week to people who sell $5 a week. And so it's kind of all over the place. The nice part is, is that our system is flexible enough that we can deal with each different level of producers. As far as the setup of displays and space allocations, we do that. Um, Producers actually pay a rental fee for their space. So in order to sell with us, you have to be a member, which is $50 a year. You have to be local, meet all of our guidelines, et cetera, et cetera. And then you rent the space to bring the product in. And we do, we keep, producers keep a static space because they like the customers to be able to know where to find them. Um, it's just worked itself out with, you know, who goes in what place. Just how much tell them how much it costs for the rental the rental it's it's minimal it basically works out for almost everybody to be about ten dollars a month for space rental we obviously we charge more for freezer space and cooler space because of the electricity but really what we see the rental for is more than just helping to pay the bills it's also it's it's um it's a contract between the market and the producer so the market is saying we'll hold the spot for you as long as you promise to bring stuff to us and then that's the same way with the, the producer is, is um, committing that they will bring product to help keep the market full. And so we feel that it helps both sides. You know, the producers know when they come in, where they put their product, they know how much to bring, they know what sort of displays to bring, and they can really decorate it. They know who they're going to be next to. And so it serves a lot of different purposes for the space rental. Did Worcester have a, um, a summer farmer's market, and did the, uh, the success of local roots affect the trade at the market? We do have a successful summer farmer's market that runs through June through October. Um, actually, everybody thinks, you know, when you're opening a local food store like this, at least we thought, like, oh, the summer's coming. It'll be our biggest time. We'll have so much sales. And really what we saw was, one of our slowest months, well, our two slowest months are February and August. And really, I think more the farmer's market um, detracts from our, the local food sales because so many of our customers are farmer's market customers, and they like that connection. They like to go on Saturdays 
and go and see the producers. Uh, what we have seen is some of the producers that sold things like meat at the farmer's market have discontinued that and sell it only through local routes because then they can save on having to take the generator out and the mobile license fee. Um, we really see at our farmer's market almost like 80% of the farmers that sell at the farmer's market also sell at local routes. And so we really see it as a partnership between the two. And we see the same customers. The customers go to the farmer's market, they get to talk to everybody, they pick up all their produce and baked goods, and then they come over to us to pick up their eggs and milk and meat and cheese before they go home. And so we, uh, from what we've heard from the farmers, that they haven't seen a, a decrease in sale sales, but they are picking up additional sales with um, the local roots customers, and especially with us being open now six days a week, that. The customers, I mean, we have people come in and they say, oh, I wouldn't have been able to make it till Saturday without Norma's bread. And now I can just come here and get it on Tuesday. So we think that's a real benefit. I just really appreciate you having me out. And I hope that this uh, sparks some conversation. Um, we got started just by people talking and getting excited about it, excited about it. And that's really all it takes. No, no, it's great. Thank you so much. <laughs>